The anatomy of the elbow strike. What part of our elbow should we be landing with? Where should we be targeting? Also, how can we make the 12 to 6 elbow legal again? Or if you don't give a shit about rules because you train for the streets, how can we make the 12 to 6 elbow more effective? Practicing the elbows on the heavy bag is not like the best way to do it. I mean, you can develop a lot of power, right? But most people will start to do it wrong because the heavy bag lies. It gives you too much feedback on this thing. You can hit it and it'll bounce you back. And it ends up becoming more of a forearm smash because what most people don't like is when they start really slashing this thing, it hurts. That hooded, right? So we need to practice it like everything else. And I know this is super boring, just like with the knee, just like with the push kick. We need to practice this thing out in space because not really out in space, but like out in some open space in your shadow boxing. We're going to cover just the basic slashing elbow, uh, no fancy trickery to it. Just how to throw a real ass elbow. A lot of the problems people have with the elbow are the same problems they have with the hook. They go to throw it and they're sending their weight into wherever they're going. And it needs to be more of a twist. I need to twist everything. I twist my feet. I twist my hips and I'm turning to throw these elbows, right? But my hands are super important. You notice I'm doing some kind of funny things that are unique to the elbow. Uh, we'll just start with a regular right elbow. We're gonna take one hand and we're gonna put it up on our head like, oh, I declare, right? The other hand is gonna be here kind of like, I'm not gonna make that joke, but uh, they're both important. This one should be obvious. If I'm close enough to elbow, he's close enough to elbow me. And it, sometimes if you're not super coordinated, this gets kind of hard, right? So turn, turn, practice it slow. Why is this hand like this? This is important. Most people could kind of figure out that you need to be mostly relaxed so that you don't get tired. And also maybe you can see that if your fist, if you have a fist balled up, it can't turn as much, right? I can't turn. I relax it. I can get a little extra travel. We're going to Put our hands on the elbow right here on the front, just like this. And then I want you to push. And I want you to make a fist. Open, make a fist. Go ahead and do it. Put your hand right here. Have your hand open or relaxed or whatever. Make a fist. If you have any kind of arm muscles at all, you should feel your forearm muscle. Look, it goes forward. That forearm muscle protrudes forward and put some meat there out front a little bit. Now, the bone is still kind of exposed, but that puts more meat there. I wanna relax and I just want this. This is the best striking surface on the elbow. It's better than the back for a lot of reasons. There's not much here that can go wrong. You do have a bursa here and you can get elbow bursitis. I'll accept some elbow bursitis if it means I successfully defended myself or I won a bunch of money in a professional fight or whatever reason you'd be throwing elbows like this. Whereas on the back elbow, and don't get me wrong, I mean, they're cool and all like, wow, like all that shit's cool. But you've got your tricep back here, your tricep tendon, which runs really close. Plus, take your elbow, do this again, put your elbow up and find that little nubule on there and then push this way on it. Ah, And then put your finger right here on this nubule and like rock back and forth, do it, do it right now. That's terrible, I hate that. But this thing right here, this thing, you can throw that in there pretty hot and uh, you know, not worry about hurting yourself. The best place to practice it you know, is in the air, right? The same way you practice with your shadow boxing, right? We need to be able to throw this thing in the air so that we know we're in balance and the heavy bag can't lie to us about our balance. You know? And we can use the principle from the last video where we kind of freeze and check this hand. And then we're gonna come across and freeze and check our balance. We're in balance. <sighs> Bing, bing. and make sure that everything is as it should be. But if you want to hit a bag, the double end bag is the way to go. Now I use this one from ringside. I did pay for it. This isn't a plug, but I like this one. It was um, fairly inexpensive. Some of these get really pricey. This one's a good one. I'll put a link down below, but it kind of represents the size, shape, and it's even a little faster than a human's head. And we're talking about hitting a human in the head. So this is like a pretty good way to practice. There's that back elbow. I can't resist sometimes. If it's spinning shit and it's going to look cool, maybe win you some money or 
get you some chicks, like, throw that shit. But let's talk about, on a human's head, where are we supposed to be hitting them? If you're talking about, like, actually, like, hitting a human being in the head, right? If it's a sport context, I want to get them anywhere above the eyes, like the forehead even, but the eyebrow, any, any of this. I mean, you can hit them here and knock them out in sport and stuff like that, but there's more targets in a sport context because if I cut you open, I win the fight because it'll open you up, blood runs into your eyes, you can't see, and they won't let you fight anymore. Sound good? No. You want us to show what that looks like? <laughs> but I don't know that in a self-defense context that extracting the maximum amount of blood from my opponent is the best idea. I don't want this guy like bleeding all over me. I'm not saying you should obsess over that, but it's just something to think about in your target selection. If it's not a target that will actually disable them, not have you win on some sort of technicality, it might not be the best target for self-defense. Elbows to the nose are like the worst. Jaw, cheek, chin, you know, this area, this triangle right here. Yes, someone's gonna say, I would just go to the body. Yes, elbows to the body suck. They hurt. They're a little harder to land. One elbow that we do use to the body, particularly like here or here, is we use this spearing elbow like that. We did a video like that, where if you hit them anywhere, you mean, I could hit you. That doesn't, that hurts, yeah. <laughs> You can hit them anywhere with this thing and it hurts. It doesn't take much. So while slashing elbows are a little hard to set up to the body, we can use that spearing elbow. There also is like one of the few back elbows I use is a spinning elbow to the body. You know, we'll set up off of whatever fake step here and we kind of screw ourselves into the ground to add stability and reach to that elbow. It's important that we don't lean, right? We can't lean with this. We've got to corkscrew straight into the earth, right? To add power and balance to it. So elbows to the body are a little difficult, but in ground and pound, elbows to the body are awesome. Let's talk about elbows in a ground and pound context, both for MMA and self-defense. And I know you're thinking like, Mike, how can ground and pound ever be self-defense? Uh, I can make a case for it here in a second, but let's talk about MMA first. We all know in the professional MMA, the uh, dreaded 12 to 6 elbow is illegal. Um, and I don't personally think it's that great, but how can we achieve this straight downward angle with an elbow and make it legal and also I think make it more impactful and even safer for you? Um, not for him. We want to attack with this part of the elbow, not this part which I've outlined before, ideally. This is a stronger, better weapon than this. So we want to come down like this, but what if you want to add that extra whoom? Well, we can do that. You pick it up just like you're gonna throw your big old 12 to six elbow and you know, drop the heavens on them. But this is just your lat contracting maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of your shoulder. We can take that same motion, pick it way up high, and when we come down, add a little bit of that boom. Boom. This motion, right at the end, same angle, boom. And as long as it hits with this, that's legal, I'm pretty sure. I'm not an expert, I'd love to hear if somebody knows better than me down below. I think if you strike with the point of the elbow, 12 to 6, that's illegal. But I bet if you're using that front of the elbow, it's not. Um, because we've seen it from side control. We go to side control. This is better even than this. This would be legal because it's not 12 to 6. But again, I'm striking with that tricep meat. And that little, ooh, push on that. Oh, I hate that feeling, right? This is better. This is even better. If you want to come down, hit with this. I think this is better in all contexts. I want to know if you are sparring with elbows and if you're using contact, how are you doing it? Are you using face shields, headgear, using elbow pads, what kind? Comment that down below. That's what I'm curious on. And also I'll put a link to some of the other elbow videos that we've done on this channel. But trust me, that stuff that you come here for, your favorite thing that you come here for is coming soon.